If somebody would have told me we're going to get to a point that a player... Welcome to another MVP podcast. My name is Dale, and today we are talking about Shannon Sharp not liking Deion Sanders wanting his son to play on a good team. Check it out. Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes gearing up for year two. After a hot start to last season, the Buffaloes finished four and eight, losing six straight to end the year. Deion's been vocal about his son Shador, a dual threat Travis Hunter entering the draft in 2025 and how much control they'll have over where they may go. Where do you predict Shador and Travis going in the draft? Top four. Ooh, that's pretty beautiful. Anywhere from one through four. One of them is going to be one. The latter one would not go behind four. Now, all this is subjective because I know where I want them to go. So there's certain cities that ain't, ain't going to happen. It's gonna okay, you want point? It's going to be a, it's not a, I'm sorry, it's going to be an Eli. As you can see, dion has got a new book out, Elevate and Dominate. All right, Robert, you're up first. Do you like these comments by Dion? Molly, I absolutely love them. And, and you heard Dion say it's subjective because of the cities. I also think it's subjective based off of how Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter play. He has no doubt in his mind, and I don't blame him that these two guys are going to go out and have a successful year this upcoming season. But I'm seeing the power shift happen right before our very eyes, and I absolutely love it. And I want people to buckle up. Because what you see in college football is these coaches running to the NFL because they hate the power dynamic that's going on in college football right now with NIL and player empowerment. Well, that's coming to the NFL. And not every single player is going to be able to pull off something like that every single year. But if Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter go out there and play the way that they're capable of, it certainly can. And I think that people have to realize that players now know they can control their own narratives. They can be in the media while they're playing and they don't have to go with the status quo. Caleb Williams goes to the combine, doesn't do anything, doesn't let the doctors touch him, only does meetings. Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't even go to the combine, doesn't do a pro day, doesn't run a 40. These guys are taking control of where they want to go. And some of them, a select few, can tell NFL teams, I don't want to play there, and they'll be right. It doesn't mean that they're not accepting the privilege that it is to play in the NFL. But Shannon, you know this, and Hawk as well. That privilege is earned, and players are now seeing that they have more power than they probably had in the past, and I'm all for it. My advice would be not to follow a blueprint that you don't have the tools for. We're talking about Deion Sanders. So my message to anybody that's hearing this is the same message that I give to other Division I coaches in recruiting. You ain't Deion. The same message that I give to players that want to go into coaching. You ain't Dion. The same message that I would give to dads with sons who are top picks. You ain't Dion. And the same message to players whose daddies want to take the same approach. Your daddy ain't Dion. Dion Sanders is a one of one. <laughs> so, yes, he probably has this kind of leverage because he's had 40 years of being the man as a player, as a coach, a media member, uh, a mentor. The combine doesn't do a pro day, doesn't run a 40. These guys are taking control of where they want to go. And some of them, a select few can tell NFL teams, I don't want to play there, and they'll be right. It doesn't mean that they're not accepting the privilege that it is to play in the NFL. But Shannon, you know this, and Hawk as well. That privilege is earned, and players are now seeing that they have more power than they probably had in the past, and I'm all for it. My advice would be not to follow a blueprint that you don't have the tools for. We're talking about Deion Sanders. So my message to anybody that's hearing this is the same message that I give to other Division I coaches in recruiting. You ain't Dion. The same message that I give to players that want to go into coaching. You ain't Dion. The same message that I would give to dads with sons who are top picks. You ain't Dion. And the same message to players whose daddies want to take the same approach. Your daddy ain't Dion. Dion Sanders is a one of one. <laughs> so yes, he probably has this kind of leverage because he's had 40 years of being the man as a player, as a coach, a media member, uh, a mentor, you name it in NFL circles. Everybody else, you got to earn this kind of leverage. Even in the NBA, when you watch players bounce around from team to team, they don't get there until they've earned that right. And then in football, if you're going to undo a whole draft system that everybody else subscribes to and all the top players still go through, you better have the leverage to do so. Otherwise, it's probably not going to go for you the way that you think it is. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not surprised that Time said this. I kind of know him. I know him a little better than probably you guys, so I'm really not surprised that he said this. Do I like it? No. I didn't like it when Eli did it, uh, and I don't like it now. And like you said, RG3, it is a privilege to play in the NFL, and I was just like, let 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 whatever is going to happen, let it happen. Um, and I and I and I get what what he's saying. He's like, look, everybody, every coaching system, every quarterback, coach, offensive coordinator is not equipped because I want to set myself my son up for the most success possible. I want to put Travis Hunter in the best position possible. I promised his mom, or I promised who his caretaker was, that I was going to look out for this young man. And I'm going to fulfill my obligation, not only while he's at uh, uh, Jackson State, not only when he's at CU Boulder, but going into the NFL. And then I'm going to watch him until the end of time because that's what I promised you I would do. I'm going to treat him just like my son. He lived with me. I'm, he's my son now. And with Shador. But for me, man, I just uh I just like I understand. There is a guys, both of you guys are right. There's a new power dynamic. And we're yep. seeing players, we're seeing uh handlers, mm -hmm. in this case, that's his son, take more mm -hmm. ownership. Yep. Place him well, we're not gonna do this. Like you said, for if somebody would have told me we're gonna get to a point I'm not gonna even go to the combine and not have a pro day. And it not negatively negatively impact him. I would have never believed it. RG three. I I would have like, man, you out your damn mind. Ain't no way <laughs> you not gonna go to the combine. Okay, you don't go to the combine. Well, I'm and we've seen guys not do things at the combine, but have a pro day and show out. He's like, I ain't doing none of that. Watch but the tape. But, Shannon, real quick, to, to, Hawk, to Hawk's point, even when you look at Eli Manning, right, when he yes. came out, obviously yes. he's Archie Manning's son. And he's hey, Peyton brother, Manning's Peyton. Eli. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Peyton Manning's his big brother. So it's a different yeah. deal. It is. Same it is. to Hawk's point with Deion Sanders. So you uh -huh. really think players like a Caleb Williams, they can pull this off? Oh, Caleb Williams, I mean, they're, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You have a lot more leverage when you're the number one pick than, say, you're the yep. 17th pick or you're the 21st. Hell, once you start getting past probably out of the top five, you're just happy to go anywhere. But when you're the number one pick, you you weld a lot of power. Now, everybody doesn't use the power. Some people are just like, hey, my lifelong dream was to play in the NFL and I got an opportunity to be the number one overall draft pick. I'll right. go anywhere. Send me to Antarctica, the moon. Hell, as a matter of <laughs> fact, I'll play three years in hell if I'm going to be the number one overall pick. But yep. Prime is saying, no, it's not so much how high I go, it's where I go that determines the success level. People think it's, well, he went number one, he did, he went number two. But if you yep. don't go to the right situation, you're, there's a greater okay. chance you're not going to have the success that you thought you would. This one really shocks me because, number one, Deion Sanders is a good friend of Shannon Sharp. So I'd expect that Shannon would understand that Dion is a father first. All right? I expect that Shannon understands Dion more than we do. He's a father first. And every father wants his team to play on a good organization. And every father, if they had the power, they would enact this right, and help that their son gets on a good team. And that's what he is planning to do. All right, it was done before three times all right, that I know of. And what makes Shannon Sharp's take so shocking is that the best player to ever do this right, was Shannon Sharp's quarterback, which is John Elway. John Elway was selected by the Baltimore Colts, and he said he didn't want to play for them, so he was traded to the Denver Broncos. All right, he played there. He didn't win. He went. He made, uh, I think, a few Super Bowls, and then Shannon Sharp came there, and Terrell Davis came there, and then they won two Super Bowls back to back, and then he became a Hall of Famer. Right, and you know the story about Eli Manning. He beat the goat. All right, Bo Jackson also did it. Tampa was going to select him, and he, um, I think, he did something with his college. I don't know to divert himself um, from playing on that team. And um, he ended up on the Raiders and the Kansas City Royals in baseball. It's nothing new at all. So that's why I don't get why Shannon is like, you know, thinking that this is some big thing. What's interesting to me is that <laughs> Deion Sanders thinks that Sh Shadur is probably going number one overall. That's going to be a big deal. I wonder who's going to get the number one pick. All right. I would like, personally, I'm a Cowboys fan, 
I would like if you know if they can land in in Dallas. You know, if you could have Deion Sanders as the new head coach in Dallas next year, and Shadur as a new quarterback, that would be great. Right, but I guess we'll have to see which team really um, is not playing well at all uh, this year and ends up landing number one pick because then we can probably expect that Shadur would go there and he would um, he would avoid, of course, uh, organizations that have not been good in the past, like the Chicago Bears, because they're going to select, you know, Caleb Williams, of course. Even a team like you know the Cardinals, they already have a quarterback and they're going to select. Um, Harrison Jr. We suppose this year also another another top receiver. So that's about it. Just wanted to show you guys this video and my and how shocking it was that Shannon Sharp went up against prime time. So until next time.